Hi children, the next topic I am going to take today is pollination that is coming after the event of gametogenesis. Before going into the details of pollination, let us have a recap of gametogenesis. I am not going into the details, but what are the products of gametogenesis? We, we saw in plants there are two types of gametogenesis namely microsporogenesis and megasporogenesis and we know as a result of microsporogenesis what was the product obtained a full fledged pollen grain. So this is also referred to as the male gametophyte. So, as a result of microsporogenesis, pollen grains are produced in plants. Another name for pollen grains, male gametophyte. Similarly, megasporogenesis results in the development of a fully developed embryo sac or ovule or female gametophyte. So, now the entire structure is an ovule or it is referred as the female gametophyte. Now briefly the parts of the pollen grain outer layer called exine inner layer called intine which is circular and continuous it is called the intine and two cells one large cell called the vegetative cell and the small cell called the generative cell. So, briefly the structure of a pollen grain it has an outer exine, inner intine and two cells a large cell called the vegetative cell and the small cell called the generative cell. Now, the female gametophyte the parts are this is the integument let me highlight the integument it is highlighted then there is a gap at one end called the micropyle then this yellow sac is called the embryo sac then within the embryo sac there are seven cells these three cells are called the antipodals and the cell at the base is together called the egg apparatus and the cell at the center is called central cell Now, in the egg apparatus, we are going to name the parts of the egg apparatus. So, I am going to highlight each part of the egg apparatus. The bordering cells, there are three cells. The bordering cells are known as the synergids. So, these two are called the synergids. And the center cell, which I am going to highlight it in yellow color is the egg. So, the egg apparatus comprises three cells at the center is the egg and on either sides are the synergids. Now, there is a very important structure in the synergids. So, that is why I zoom this diagram. We are zooming and seeing the structure of the synergids. So, please concentrate at the pink color structures on either sides of the egg. There are finger like processes. 
finger like processes and these finger like processes are called filiform apparatus. So once again we have the egg apparatus at the base of the embryo sac or towards the micropylar end it comprises three cells at the center is the egg on either sides are the synergids and in the synergids there are finger like processes which I have indicated in blue color like scribblings they are called the filiform apparatus. They are very important because the role of the filiform apparatus is they guide the pollen tube towards the egg. The pollen tube should come correctly towards the egg. So this is guided by the filiform apparatus. Remember that. Now this male gametophyte, what is the male gametophyte called? Pollen grain. It is located inside the anther lobe of the stamen. We dealt with the male reproductive organ. It is the stamen. And I will explain the parts of the stamen. It has two parts. Filament and the anther lobe. This pollen grain is present inside the anther lobe. So I am minimizing this. They are very minute microscopic structures. I am putting it inside the anther lobe. Next, the female gametophyte that is the ovule. I am placing it in the ovary. See, this is the ovule or the female gametophyte. I am placing it inside the ovary and we know the female reproductive organ is the carpal which has three parts stigma, style and ovary. Inside the ovary I place the ovule or the female reproductive organ and do not forget it is held by a stalk called funicle which was explained in the first class. So now I brought both the reproductive organs. Both the reproductive organs mainly the stamen, the male reproductive organ and carpal or pistil, the female reproductive organ. So the next topic we are going to deal is with pollination. So what is pollination? We have learned right from small class about pollination. Pollination, it is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. Once again I repeat, pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther when it matures. When the anther matures, it ruptures and releases the pollen grains and these pollen grains fall on the stigma. Now the pollen grains I have indicated in red color. So remember, red color is going to be a pollen grain. It falls on the stigma. This process is called pollination and this is affected or brought about by various agents. This transfer is brought about by various agents. They are wind, water and animals. Name some animals. We have insects, birds and bats which brings about pollination. The next topic is the types of pollination. In smaller classes you will have classified, we have classified pollination into two types, simple self pollination and cross pollination but at the 12th standard level we are going into detail, there are three types of pollination. I am going to depict with three diagrams. Now look at this flower. This is a bisexual flower. It is a bisexual flower because it has both, it has both the female reproductive organ that is the carpal and the male reproductive organ that is the stamen. So this is a bisexual flower. Here the pollen grains fall from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. So this pollination is called autogamy. So the first type of pollination auto gammy. So what is autogamy? The transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. It happens in bisexual flowers. So the first type of pollination is autogamy. The second type of pollination. 
so we have a plant with both types of flowers see this plant it bears two types of plant uh, flowers namely the flowers which has only stamen see these are the stamen so these flowers are called staminate flowers and also it bears flowers which has only carpels and these flowers are called carpellate flowers it's unlike bisexual flowers where the same flower bears both the anther and the uh, carpel but here the same plant bears uh, exclusively staminate flowers and exclusively carpellate flowers it's not bisexual but separate by uh, flowers unisexual staminate unisexual carpellate flowers now here there's a transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same plant see there's a transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant this is known this pollination is known as gitnogamy so the second type of pollination is gitnogamy i hope you have understood what is gitnogamy and autogamy autogamy is transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower within the same flower whereas here it is within the same plant transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma within the same plant that's from one flower to another flower and so these plants will be bearing two types of flowers carpellate flowers which bears carpel and staminate flowers which bears only stamens now the third type of pollination now the third type of pollination i drew two different plants of the same species and here the transfer takes from the anther to the stigma of two different plants so here this pollination occurs between two different plants of the same species so the definition goes like this way pollination here means the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a different plant of the same species this is the third pollination and it's known as xenogamy so bringing all the three types of pollination the first one it is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower so such plant should have bisexual flowers that is called autogamy then gitnogamy the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same plant and last we have xenogamy it's a transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one plant to the stigma of another plant of the same species i hope you have understood the three types of pollination now pollination does not guarantee the falling of the right pollen grains because it's exposed to nature different types of pollen grains falls on the stigma see the red color then of another species which i have indicated in blue color then yellow uh, uh, say another colors green color of another wild variety so there are different types of pollen falling on the stigma so pollination is a process that does not guarantee that the right pollen falls on the stigma so the pistil or the carpel should have the ability to recognize right pollen from wrong pollen so here we are not going to use the word right and wrong the correct terminology for right pollen right is called compatible and wrong pollen is called incompatible so the pistil or the carpel has the ability to recognize the right or the compatible co uh, pollen grains from the incompatible co pollen grains and accept the compatible pollen grains and reject the incompatible pollen grains now how does it do this acceptance and rejection the only way it is it allows the compatible pollen grains to germinate and the incompatible co pollen grains are not allowed to germinate simple as that so on this stigma see i've zoomed the stigma and i told you the right pollen grain or the compatible ones are the red colored 
so only the red is allowed to germinate into a pollen tube whereas the green and blue is rejected how it is rejected it's not uh, wiped away it's not allowed to germinate so now we are going to see pollen germination the pollen tube is going to germinate so our right or the compactable pollen grain is the red one so it's going to germinate so i'm going to use red color right across so one of the pollen grain which is on the stigma the landing platform will slowly germinate into a pollen tube and this pollen tube will penetrate through the stigma style and then ovary and then it reaches this opening called the micropyle i must make it tubular a tube is formed which penetrates through the stigma style and ovary and enters the micropyle now as this pollen grain is germinating into a pollen tube so this structure is called pollen tube as this is germinating recollect the two cells of the pollen grain there is a vegetative cell and the generative cell the vegetative cell has an irregular nucleus and the generative cell has a dense nucleus okay this is the pollen grain i told you this is intine and then outside is the exine i want your attention on the two cells the two cells the large cell is called the vegetative cell and the small cell is called the generative cell as the name suggests generative that will click in your mind the generative cells are going to generate the two male gametes and i'm showing it on this diagram the generative cell divides into two see in this diagram i'm showing the generative cell is going to divide into two so if it's going to divide into two daughter cells which is the type of cell division involved is it meiosis or mitosis it is mitosis two daughter cells are produced as a result of mitosis so the generator cell will produce two daughter cells and these two daughter cells are called the male gametes so this happens as a pollen tube germinates so once again as a pollen grains falls on the stigma the right pollen grains or the compatible pollen grains develops into the pollen tube and this pollen tube germinates through the stigma style and ovary as it is germinating the not the vegetative cell the generative cell from the name itself generative cell generates two male gametes by which process by mitosis to produce two male gametes so i'm going to show two male gametes in blue in color two male gametes okay and these two male gametes move down through the pollen tube and reach the micropyle okay now very important here comes the role of filiform apparatus now where should the two male gametes reach it should reach the egg so this is directed or guided by the filiform apparatus which is present in the synergids today i explain what is egg apparatus comprising egg and, and on either sides the synergids and the synergids bear finger like process called filiform apparatus so the filiform apparatus guides it correctly to the egg now here the pollen tube is formed towards the side suppose the pollen tube tube is formed towards the right side this is the right side filiform apparatus which is guiding it correctly or else it will go in wrong direction if there was no filiform apparatus the pollen tube instead of reaching here and reaching the egg it will go another direction so the very important role of filiform apparatus is to guide the pollen tube towards the egg so today's class i wind up with pollination so uh, today's topic i hope you have understood and uh, the next topic will be dealing with fertilization thank you